coming to you from our Aerospark Studios in Windhoek. And this is the third installment of Prime Time News. It's always a pleasure having you. I'm Michael Madimba. We commence tonight's bulletin in the presidency. President Dr. Hage Gengop traveled to the United States of America last night to undergo seven days of specialized medical treatment. A media statement issued on Wednesday evening by the presidency said following his public announcement on the 19th of January about cancerous cells being detected, the president accepted a medical offer by leading scientists in medical professionals in Los Angeles, California, to undergo novel therapy for the cancerous cells from the 25th of January to the 2nd of February. We wish the president all the best of success as he undergoes surgery and wishing him a speedy recovery. Now, food items meant for the National Drought Relief Program have been reported stolen at Oshikangu in the Wangwena region. In a press release issued by the Prime Minister's office yesterday, the food items were reportedly stolen from the Oshikangu warehouse. Show the world's filed the story. The office of the Prime Minister in a press release on Wednesday said the food items were stolen from the Oshikango warehouse. It is said a case has been registered with the Namibian police and the suspects have been apprehended. The office of the Prime Minister urges the public to refrain from buying drought relief items and to instead notify the Namibian police of any suspicious sales of food items in their areas. The Office of the Prime Minister is urging all 14 regional councils to safeguard the drought relief food items and to ensure the timely distribution of these items to the intended beneficiaries. Police investigations into the matter are ongoing. Sylvia Shundali reporting for Prime Time News. The United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF in Namibia and the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO have commended the Namibian government for showing leadership at the Transforming Education Summit. Linia Dishena compiled this insert. In a press statement on the International Day of Education, it said the Namibian government took initiative in addressing the learning crisis and discussing solutions to achieve inclusive and equitable quality education for all by 2030 at the Transforming Education Summit in September 2022. It further said the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture continues to report high cases of learner pregnancies, high repetition rates in the early grades, as well as dropout rates across the basic education phases, the UN agencies noted. The Namibia Educational Management Information System of 2022 recorded a high number of grade 1 repetitions at 17.3% and 18.3% in grade 4. UNESCO and UNICEF noted this confirms the concern that children are completing primary education with minimal foundational skills, adding that the same educational management information system records show that 17,982 learners dropped out of school during the same calendar year, and of these, a total of 2,739 girls dropped out due to pregnancy. Daniela Isaacs reporting for Prime Time News. Moving on, the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture has approved plans for the construction of an additional primary school at the Hood Oak Settlement in the Commerce region. The Director of Education in the region, Paulus Ngekembwa, told Primetime News in a recent interview that the primary school is expected to be operational by 2030. Let's now get some context from this report. The Director of Education in the region, Paulus Nikemwa, told Nampa in a recent interview that the primary school is expected to be operational by 2030. The rapidly expanding settlement, situated about 60 kilometers south of Vendu, currently has only one primary school and one secondary school, catering to a population exceeding 24,000 residents. The surge in population has led to the overcrowding of classrooms at both Hrodwa Primary School and Hrodwa Secondary School. Isaac de Groot, the principal of Hrodwop Secondary School, told Nampa in a recent interview that last year the school had three grade 8 classes and there is a possibility of that number increasing in the current academic year. De Groot stated that they have admitted 181 grade 8 learners this year and there is a possibility that that number will increase, so they might need an additional class. 
Additionally, the school accommodates learners from Farm Primary School in Dwadabas, Nicholas Verdboy Memorial School and Blokrantz Primary School. Last year, the Groot said the school made use of a church building and a library on the premises as additional classrooms. Konjeni Ambinga reporting for Primetime News. Stay tuned for your top roundup with the business segment, The Rafter. Welcome to the Primetime B segment, your leading source for all things business. The segment kickstarts in the Oshikoto region with Regional Council Chairperson. Samuel Shivute has encouraged regional councillors, heads of departments and other stakeholders to understand and internalize their customer service charter in order to set standards when interacting with customers. Now, Shivuta made the statement during the official launch of the Oshikoto Regional Council's Customer Service Charter at Omothia on Wednesday. Shivute made the statement during the official launch of the Oshikoto Regional Council's Customer Service Charter at Omothia on Wednesday. He emphasized the importance of making the information contained in the charter available to all customers at grassroots level. Shivute said as public servants they are required to be open, ethical, responsible, accountable and dedicated to the public they serve. He stated to achieve such a goal, the Regional Council, with the assistance of the Office of the Prime Minister, formulated the Customer Service Charter, which is a guiding document that sets out specific standards of service we promise to deliver to our customers. Shivote noted that the Charter explains how they intend to work with customers and operate as a government body with a mandate to plan and coordinate development. Salima Shumwefeleni Masiba for Primetime News. Deputy Director of Marginalized Communities in the Ministry of Gender Equality, Poverty Eradication and Social Welfare, Rebecca Namwandi has encouraged members of marginalized communities to stay in one place to ensure that they receive their quarterly food allocations. In an interview with Prime Tambers earlier today, Namwandi cited the nomadic nature of some of the members of the marginalized communities that makes it difficult for the allocation of food parcels. Namwandi said in an interview with the Namibia Press Agency earlier today that the nomadic nature of some of the members of the marginalized communities has made it difficult for the allocation of food parcels. Namwandi noted that it is their way of living, it is their character, so they cannot do anything about it because it is their tradition. Adding, this however makes their job extremely difficult and costly because the regional planners travel for long distances to take food to them but they find a whole village vacant. In response to the issue, Namwandi said, the ministry has started looking for strategies to let regional councillors notify them through radio communication about the availability of food parcels. She stressed they have learned that people neither listen to radios nor read newspapers because of the location they are in, so it is extremely difficult to alert them. Namwandi said this after the Regional Council of Nehale Lyampingana constituency in Oshikoto region, Joseph Shilongo, told the Namibia Press Agency they are struggling to distribute food to the marginalized communities because they are always moving from one place to another without notifying them. Salima Shumwefeleni Masipa for Primetime News. This is where I leave it with the top segment for tonight. Your business and economics roundup is up next. But before that, as a quick look at Friday's weather outlook in the weather report.
come to Sport Planet, the segment for all things sport in action. First things first, a massive congratulations to our own Brave Warriors for doing the nation proud and qualifying into the group of last 16 at the tournament. Now, it's Afghan football galo as the action twists and turns continue to unravel. Tunisia coach Jalil Kadri announced he was stepping down after his side's disappointing group exit from the Africa Cup of Nations. He joins the coaches of hosts Ivory Coast, Ghana and Algeria to leave their posts on Wednesday. Kadri announced his decision in the aftermath of the Carthage Eagles goalless draw with South Africa, which confirmed the end of their Afghan participation. Moving on to the business of football. Real Madrid have climbed to the top of football's money league as the Spanish side surpassed Manchester City to become the highest revenue generating club in the 2022-23 period. For the first time since the 2017-18 era, Real are in pole position in Deloitte's financial rankings with a reported record revenue of 831 million euros, an increase of 118 million euros over the previous year. Although they fell to win La Liga last season, finishing 10 points behind champions Barcelona and lost in the Champions League semi-finals to Manchester City, Real's growth is largely attributable to strong retail performance, higher stadium attendance and recovery of sponsorship income following the easing of COVID-19 restrictions. Stay tuned for your sports roundup. This is where I wrap it for tonight. Many thanks for cruising with me on the first edition of Primetime News. A parting reminder to follow the on-screen prompts so as to be abreast with events within and beyond Namibia. Otherwise, from myself, Michael Madimba and my production crew behind the scenes, it's good night. <laughs>